May only the truth be spoken and only the truth be heard. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, sanctifier. Amen. When David had nothing, he had everything. When he was a shepherd, simple, humble, grateful, he gave us psalms that we will never forget. When he was a king, complicated, conceited, covetous, we heard stories about him that we wish we could forget. But the fall of David is our fall too. The spiral from everything to nothing, from fullness to emptiness, that's not just David's story, it is ours. Sometimes we need to hear that. Sometimes we need someone to speak the truth to us in love. Hasn't there been a time in your life when you wished that someone would have told you what a mess things were? We need someone to help us see when our lives are a wreck. So as we enter the carnage of today's readings, Nathan, God's prophet, helps us to see the paradox of David's life. Because take away the castle, the crown, and the conquests, we are so much like him. At some time in our lives, we fail to see the fullness of everything that God has given us. Because all we see is our own emptiness. And that's the paradox of our spiritual lives. The emptiness that surrounds us, the emptiness we sometimes feel inside, it's not that there's nothing there. It's that we don't see what is there. It's not what is missing. It's what we are missing, what we fail to see. So instead of reveling in gratitude for all that we have and all that we are, we sometimes wallow in despair for what we don't have and what we will never be. And so we focus not on the fullness of life that surrounds us, but on the emptiness that is within us. And the question that ends up framing our lives is, how do I fill the emptiness? That question is so much a part of the human condition that the characters in today's readings can't stay away from it either. In the reading from Samuel, David had it all. As Nathan is quick to point out when he confronts him about the murder of Uriah and David's marriage to Bathsheba. Nathan speaks for God to David and says, I anointed you as king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. How exquisitely appropriate that Nathan's name literally means God has given. And here he is, God's mouthpiece, telling David how much he has been given. God fed David with enough blessings to satisfy anyone's desire. But for David, it wasn't enough. You know, 
I used to think that David was just plain greedy, that he had had a taste of the good life and just wanted more, that his absolute power had corrupted him absolutely, that he was basically an addict with a crown. And similarly, when I was young and would see people on the street, I pitied them, but in my heart, I thought they were just plain weak, that if only they tried hard enough, they'd be able to kick the habit and conquer the addiction. But then I became an addict myself. And after taking that long, painful journey and reflecting on my own struggles, I came to understand that addiction or greed or lust for power or prestige, whatever the failing, whatever the flaw, it really is all about emptiness. There is an emptiness in our lives that we struggle to fill. And the irony is that our hunger to be filled is supposed to be a blessing. We are blessed that God plants in our hearts this fierce desire, a longing for something that we can't always put our finger on, but that we spend much of our life seeking. That longing is for God, experienced in connection with one another. And the truth born out of today's reading is that only God can fill the emptiness of our lives. God has fashioned us to deeply desire fullness of life. But when we try and fill ourselves with that which is not God, what we are left with is an emptiness. It's the same lesson that the crowd learns in today's gospel. Jesus has just fed 5,000 of them for heaven's sakes. And they follow him all the way to Capernaum for the next meal. And Jesus tells them, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. He loves them. He acknowledges their emptiness but he tells them that the only way to satisfy their hunger is with God. It's not just the crowd that God desperately wants to satisfy. It is our hunger. It is everyone's longing. So many come to this place seeking something longing to be filled, looking for hope in a world that often seems so full of despair. Some are looking for a meal, some longing for a deeper connection, to be known, to be cared for, to be loved. Some are grieving a loss of a person or a place or just a sense of peace and sanity in the world. And like us, they're all searching for hope, for wholeness, for God. We are here so that we can discover together how to address those longings.
satisfy the hungers of one another and for all of those who are seeking the presence of God in their lives. Getting back to emptiness for a moment. My mom's funeral was yesterday. So I came to church this morning with this, this void in my heart, only to discover a card on my desk. This is what one of you wrote to me. When my mother passed, many referred to my loss. But having her for the time that I did was actually my gain. That helps. Being reminded that in the end, what fills us with hope, with healing, with God, is gratitude. Simply that. Many of us come every week and stand there with some emptiness in our lives. Some of us will do that today. Know this, that in Jesus, the bread of life, that in the care and compassion of this community, whatever the emptiness is that is in your life, God's deepest desire is that you would be filled. Amen.